G'day mates, in today's video I want to kick off talking about the Cash Cup and the insane clutches from Benji Savage and Day and Clicks to qualify in their final games. Also we have the news that Sony or PlayStation and Lego are investing over $2 billion into Epic Games and I want to talk about what this means especially for you console players and maybe why you should be switching to PlayStation. Also you guys keep asking me when is FNCS and while it hasn't been officially announced I do have some theories on when FNCS is going to be starting and if you you guys haven't heard epic is flying out a whole bunch of pros to north carolina and copenhagen and a lot of people are now suspecting this could be the signs of a land event being announced this season or even potentially a world cup it's super exciting news it's a lot to talk about let's just jump into it the Duo Cash Cup qualifiers were today and they were so incredibly exciting. I want to run through the leaderboards and pick out the big names, let you guys know what's happening in case you missed any of it. Kicking off with EU, we had Vino and Aqua absolutely dominating on 211 points, playing 10 matches and winning three of them with an average ELIMS of 9.30. They played absolutely ridiculous. This team is doing so insanely well right now, even in finals, even while being contested by Taysen and Thomas HD, who did not actually qualify this week. So we are potentially going to see Aqua and Vino with uncontested south side of Covert, which very much could be a winning formula. Unless another team is brave enough to drop on them, even though Taysen and Thomas were getting outdropped by them, which I don't imagine too many people are going to be keen to do. Vino and Aqua are looking absolutely fantastic in the finals. We had Mustache and Malabuka continuing their very dominant tear right now in second place on 191. We had Seti and Kami in third on 183, proving they are one of the most new, consistent, newly formed teams. And when you take that, that's two of the top three teams on EU are new teams. We also had Blade up there, Nebs, we had Floki, we had Hen and Queezy. Now that Hen is back, he wasn't able to play last week. This is our first chance seeing Hen and Queezy play together. And of course, they are still absolutely dominating. I want to jump down the leaderboard a little bit as well. And I want to pick out a few of the names. We had Vortex and Suns, the OCE exports making their first EU finals as a duo. They made the Evaluation Cup, which is obviously super exciting, but their first proper cash cup, they've made finals. Coming off the back of Suns earning yesterday, today in solos. The OCU players are looking really, really good on EU. And honestly, right now, I feel like they're impressing people a lot more than they thought they were going to. So we'll see how they go in finals. If they can pull something off like a valuation cup, that'd be amazing. Couple places behind them, we had Benji and Savage. Now, Benji and Savage, I've talked about this a lot of my videos. They usually have a trend with their cash cups. They start off insanely strong, then they fall off the pace at the end and it gets a little bit sketchy. This tournament was the complete opposite. They basically had to do the Mongrel and Mitro strat where they were struggling so bad badly they pretty much took a half an hour break in the middle of their cash cup left it to their last two games and they absolutely dominated their second last game being a 33 elim win it seriously felt like we were watching a mongrel and mitro tournament where they just have those huge breaks then absolutely dominate benji pulled off one of the most insane high ground clips i've seen again i'll roll it here because this one was an absolute beauty i've hit it 100 okay 100 you flashing yeah Box. Oh, dead, dead, dead. Don't, don't hide, don't hide. This. Crack. Yeah, I'm getting finished. We, Kevin, we don't get knocked out. You did see that clearly. That was his 17th kill of the game. I believe he ended up getting 21 kills alone that game. It was absolutely ridiculous. This put them back on track to qualify. And then it came down to their very last game where they got a nine elim third. So they got so many of their points in their last two games. It was super exciting to watch. I don't want to see Benji and Savage go for this strategy every single week. Because as we know from watching Mongol and Metro, it is quite risky. But man, does it bring the content. Watching that second last game was insane. Benji doesn't have have his VOD up on Twitch, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'd put it in the description for you guys to go and watch it. It might be published later. And if it does, if you want to go watch an absolute masterclass of just W King through, you know, honestly, what was a pretty decent lobby. Like, yes, they left a break, but they weren't just running through complete potatoes. Like, this was a lobby that had surge warnings and they dropped a 33 kill win. Moving on to NA East, we had a team we haven't seen on the top in quite a while. These are two players who are absolutely phenomenal and have had such huge achievements in the past. And they've still been very good for a long time, but really haven't seen them at the top of the leaderboard. We had Slacks and Clarity G coming in first on 195 points, nine matches, three wins with an average ELIMS of 7.33. They played insane. They had two games. They went down on spawn. If they didn't go down on spawn, they pretty much got a top five or even a first or second. They played so 
ridiculously well and consistent. We had Pam Stu and Fatch, a team that I've been gassing up since last season, playing really, really consistent on 177 points. And then Illust and Jack with 174 points, but you are seeing that correctly. Six matches and two wins. In their six games, their worst placement was an eighth place. Illust and Jack were absolutely insane. Unfortunately, their last game finished four minutes before lobbies closed and they didn't get another game. They would have almost definitely won the cash cup if they did get another game, but still a third place only six matches is ridiculous. We had Jamper and Dukes. We had Styx and Who Fishy. If you guys don't know, Styx and Who Fishy are actually brothers. Styx hasn't qualified for finals in quite some time. I think he was just playing with his brother for a bit of fun, a bit of throwback, and they had 172 points, absolutely dominating with eight matches and three wins. It was honestly so fun to watch these two guys play. We had Creo and Vert, a team that has been together for quite a while now and loving to see them pop off. Haji and Suscript, Nani and Pump, Aviv and Squish, and then Voil and Exep. Again, I mentioned Taysen not qualifying on EU with Thomas HD, but he managed to qualify on NA East with Chapix, and they were doing really, really well. I think they were in a top five position about midway through the tournament. Unfortunately, their last four or five games did let them down, but still a 12th place on NA from EU is always ridiculous. We had Mega and Dubs, the OG duo, and then DJ and Yomzo, and I wanted to touch on this one specifically because I want to show you something that sums up the meta a lot right now, and you've probably seen it. The use of vehicles in the end game, more specifically the Tonka trucks, and let me just show you exactly what DJ and Yomzo were doing to get this insane placement. Oh my god, go! <laughs> Don't get out, get out and flip it, get out and flip it. Drive. No, get out and flip. You driving, you driving. I'm driving. You want driver's seat? No, 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 we can't yet. And that is going to be something you see a lot in streams and a lot in videos. I actually did call for the truck to get nerfed, I think like two or three months ago in a video and people laughed at me saying, Ozzy, it's a truck. How do you even get it to endgame? And if you do, it's not that strong. And people are starting to realize just how overpowered the vehicles are right now. And again, I know this is going to cause a lot of people to be like, oh, comp players always just complaining now it's cars. But if you watch the tournaments today, you know, watching clips like that, that should not be in competitive. And it's pretty easy to fix it. Again, a lot of people coming up with a whole bunch of solutions that when you drive through bills you should take damage in the vehicle or you should take damage as a player all these different things and i would honestly argue that potentially just don't allow vehicles to break through builds like at least i mean you might you need to get momentum at least the problem with the truck is no momentum is required you can just plow through everything but i would still argue that vehicles aren't meant to be just driven through builds at any amount of momentum just plowing through end games or driving into one by ones i think the game would be completely fine if vehicles just didn't break builds you still have them for early game rotations you still have them to get around the map you could still you know chase people down in pubs or arena and hit shots out of the vehicles it's just they wouldn't be used in competitive as just battering rams to just drive through end game i don't know again maybe a system where the vehicle takes damage or you as a player take damage when you drive through builds would be great but at the moment it's fair to say if you watch the cash cups at all you know something needs to be done about the vehicles because now we have people carrying blow torches so they could just sit in the passenger seat of the car and repair it or their teammates just get elimination storm surge free rotations like they are just so incredibly strong and i keep getting asked the same question aussie why are people using them now the cars were just as good last season and like i said i made a video talking about how overpowered the vehicles were and suggesting people use them in endgame but because of the spider-man getting all the focus and everyone having their attention on spider-man a lot of people didn't realize just how good vehicles could be also the other issue is if you're the only vehicle in endgame just driving through you know the rotating zones you're gonna get beamed and focused pretty heavily but if you're one of like 10 vehicles or even five vehicles most players will just think there's so many cars i just need to elevate and get away from them they're not going to try to beam them they're not going to try to focus them because almost no one is shooting at the vehicles and then when you add the blowtorch which only came out this season it feels even less rewarding to beam the vehicles because you know they're just going to heal it back anyway so if you really want to place right now in cash cups start abusing vehicles 
because I know you guys are going to be asking. Yes, Clicks and Day did qualify this week. They came 15th, getting 147 points. It came down to their very last game. And if you watched it, it was a sketchy one. Clicks rotated Day to the far side of a big, big water zone, thinking they had a launch pad. They didn't. And every single zone pulled max. But luckily, they were able to pull it off. And honestly, Clicks and Day were looking really, really good. The first week had a lot of people scared, a lot of people saying that Day hasn't been grinding. He's been playing GTA and he's just not himself clicks was still looking pretty crazy that first week but honestly they brought it back both of them were playing phenomenally today and i really do think they can do big things in the finals especially if they keep their drop locked down clicks is clearly very very motivated right now he is trying incredibly hard and honestly they look like a winning duo i'd love to see them get at least a top five in the finals if they have their drop uncontested and they put it all together if not i know they'll get it together by fncs because clicks is grinding the game incredibly and it looks like day is too day has been playing a whole bunch of Grand Theft Auto, been playing a whole bunch of other games on stream, which is awesome. Really good for the downtime to rest, rewind, recover. But Dale is dialing back in and they were looking very, very scary. I've been wanting to talk about this for a minute, but I think Epic was trying to keep it under wraps, but it looks like it's all out there now and a whole bunch of people are talking about it on Twitter and social media. In case you guys missed it, Epic has invited a whole bunch of pros to Copenhagen and North Carolina to do media work and film interviews and different content pieces. Now, this is pretty cool and exciting in itself, but it's what it's led a lot of people to believe that's even more exciting. You have people out there like Calc who are arguing this could be heralding the return of either LAN events and or a World Cup saying that why would they be putting this much effort in spending this much money to invite and fly out and get accommodation for a whole bunch of pros just to get some interviews and clips for an FNCS. And honestly, I kind of have to agree with Calc on this one. You have other pros arguing against it, like Vino just saying that, look, they're just trying to make some content. There's a new broadcast team. If you guys don't know, the broadcast now is being ran by Blast. That's probably why you've seen some pretty big upgrades to the broadcast recently. They're doing some cool stuff and they did have like face cams and some interviews done with players in their homes so it makes sense they would be taking the logical step to actually fly pros out and get better content from them but it does seem like a lot of effort they are flying so many pros out doing cool activities with them going to be talking to them about some stuff maybe getting feedback about the games it just looks like epic comp team is putting in a lot of effort right now and flying pros and putting them in accommodation pretty much looks a lot like organizing events to me i know this isn't going to be a land event and they've kept it secret from us but with COVID COVID restrictions easing, if they're now willing to fly pros out and put them in accommodation and risk that, you know, maybe they get COVID or something like that, it's only logically one step further to fly them out and put them in accommodation for a tournament. I really do think Calc is onto something and I feel like this is a really good sign going forward. I don't know if this means we're going to get a LAN event announced in two weeks or something, but at the same time, this is a very good sign that Epic is investing more money into competitive and starting to gear things at least somewhat to in in-person events. This has me ridiculously excited. I at least wanted to talk about it. I didn't want to put in the title or in the thumbnail as, oh my gosh, World Cup coming up or land events returning because it's not something concrete to go off. But I think it's something I definitely wanted to mention because in itself, it's just really cool if we're going to see a whole bunch of interviews and content coming out with pros in person. And I feel like this is what's been missing from Fortnite and Epic Games. A lot of the toxicity, a lot of the hate, a lot of the frustration would honestly become a lot better if land events returned just pros meeting up and realizing the person that they're smack talking or saying is cheating or hacking is an actual real human being and a lot of people just have fun with them i'm i'm not saying that pros wouldn't be upset if we had a terrible meta but if you have a not so great meta and you're frustrated but you're going to land events hanging out with friends the prize pools are insane at them it's gonna do a lot to make you not as frustrated some of the things the pros put up with during the early days like the skirmishes and world cup was insane yes fortnite was fun and exciting and new but a lot of it was just what LAN events bring to an esport. It makes them feel more real. It makes them feel more fun and just so much more exciting. So I really hope this is a sign of what's to come. And they haven't just invited a few pros. I'm talking they've invited at least that I know of about 20 plus pros just in NA. So this is going to be pretty exciting. The question I keep seeing asked, and I understand why you guys are freaking out, when is FNCS? We have this season ending in one month and 22 days from now, less than two months until the season ends, and we haven't even had FNCS announced. There was a blog post talking about this. They posted a couple weeks ago. They said, in addition to that news, this season's FNCS will also provide more rounds to compete along with more chance to qualify. More details will be included in the next FNCS competitive details blog. 
we haven't had that yet so i was waiting until that came out to talk about it but you guys want some kind of information and the best i have to offer is if you go into your compete tab and you look at the solo cash cups you'll notice there's a pretty decent break between week four and week five for the solo cash cups we have week four starting in 20 days it is going to be taking place on the first of the fifth and then we have week five starting on the 21st of the fifth so there is a 20 day break between week four and week five and that is going to be for a reason so some part of fncs is taking place on those two weeks and i have to imagine it would be the finals but if it's the finals that means fncs needs to start pretty much tomorrow to have three weeks long of an fncs so i know that doesn't offer much i guess maybe epic's logic is instead of getting rid of the cash cups for the finals which is only going to be a few players maybe they get rid of the solo cash cups during the qualifiers so maybe the qualifiers start in 21 days hopefully they run for a week or two and then we can have semi-finals and finals based Based on that blog post though with more ways to qualify i was really hoping fncs would be a little bit longer maybe about four weeks long but if the season is ending in one month and 22 days that actually gives them time to wait two weeks until fncs starts and then fncs can be four weeks long i'm sorry that's just a lot of speculation i have no actual hard evidence or information to give you guys but i keep seeing this question asked and i wanted to at least give you something to go off i'm sorry there's nothing more Sony and Lego just invested $2 billion in Epic Games. And now what does this mean and why is this so exciting? So if you read the article, I'll link in the description down below. It looks like there's going to be a whole bunch of exciting collaborations coming out. And it's all revolving around the metaverse and creating a cool space for kids to come and play and have fun and play games. But the thing it means for you guys is honestly, if you are choosing your next console to play Fortnite on, it's looking like it needs to be a PlayStation. Sony is investing big into Epic Games, and I keep talking about this when Sony and PlayStation keep putting on tournaments that Xbox players don't get to play, and I keep telling you, it's not Epic, it's Sony. It's because Microsoft isn't putting up the prize pool and isn't putting on tournaments. Meanwhile, Sony is, because Sony had already invested a whole bunch of money in Epic Games, and now they're investing a billion dollars of their own money, and LEGO is also investing a billion dollars. Outside of just maybe which next console you should pick up and i'm not even saying that this is guaranteed playstation is going to get so many tournaments and playstation is going to get better it's just when you have the company that makes a console investing over a billion dollars into the game you play it's usually a good sign there's going to be some cool exclusive stuff or at the very least some smaller tournaments i'm not guaranteeing that but it looks very very likely based on the fact that there is already so many more playstation tournaments than xbox but this is also just exciting for anyone whether you're on xbox or whether you're on pc just the the fact that big companies like Lego and Sony are putting $2 billion into Epic means there's some really exciting things coming up in the future. All this talk around the metaverse, I don't fully understand the appeal to metaverse. And I don't really get how it's going to link into Fortnite, but as Fortnite goes more and more down this line of collaboration and doing these really cool things, it's going to be so much more than just a Lego skin or like even maybe a Lego season like Marvel. It looks like with this new Unreal Engine and Creative 2.0 and all the modding that's going to happen, Fortnite really is transcending past just being a video game it's going to be a space where there's just so much more cool stuff happening so i at least wanted to include it in the video because this is massive news that i feel like unless you're reading articles like the normal news in the mainstream media you probably don't even know about this but two billion dollars just got invested in epic fortnite is going nowhere all right guys that does it for another video i hope you enjoyed if you did please chuck a like on it subscribe to the channel if you haven't and i'll see you in the next one